It's September the 12th, 1918, and at the controls of his fighter is Second Lieutenant Frank Luke. He threads his way through heavy fire as his target looms larger and larger in his sights. The rest of his squadron are hanging back out of the range of fire. This is a dangerous job for one man. Why risk the whole squadron when one troublesome maverick pilot can go in quickly and do the job? Frank has been volunteered after upsetting the squadron commander and the commander had obviously decided that losing Frank would not be a critical loss. But Frank has no time for regrets now. He can see the target dwarfing his tiny plane. It's a German observation balloon. The Germans have been spying on the enemy using these hydrogen-filled balloons as a way to get vital information on troop movements. Frank pulls the trigger, unleashing his twin machine guns on the target. The bullets punch straight into the balloon's fabric, causing a leak of the highly flammable hydrogen. He keeps firing, hoping to set the flammable gas alight, but despite his best effort, it doesn't happen, and he's forced to pull away before hitting the balloon. He looks back angrily to a still floating balloon. He turns his S-8 fighter around for another run, once again braving the air thick with anti-aircraft fire as he unleashes a second barrage into the balloon, determined to take it down, even as his aircraft is torn to pieces around him by the enemy. He pours bullets into its flank, getting closer, closer, but it never sets a light. And at the last second, he pulls away by the skin of his teeth. The brave aviator escapes the onslaught of enemy fire, but he's unsatisfied. He knows he must have punched dozens of holes into it. By all intents and purposes, his mission is complete, but Frank wants to see flames. Fearless, and despite all the damage already done to his bird, he turns right around for a third pass. Up above, his squadron mates watch in astonishment as he braves the enemy fire a third time. Frank pulls the trigger, unleashing all he's got in the last ditch attempt. Finally, one of his bullets detonates within the balloon. The small flame of the explosion grows rapidly, swelling and consuming the highly flammable hydrogen, exploding out of the balloon and continuing to grow in the air as it chases the plume of leaking gas. In the blink of an eye, a gigantic fireball lights up the battlefield. Often, pilots shooting balloons would fall prey to the fireball as it fell upon them. But Frank is too quick and he dives away before the inferno catches him, making a rapid escape as the target crumbles into a falling pillar of smoke and flame. The squadron leader watches in shock from above. It seems, despite all the insubordination, the new kid was no coward after all. Upon his return to the airfield, his peers saw Frank in a newfound respect, but still, one balloon was not enough to become popular. But still, he found friendship with fellow squadmate Joseph Weiner. His balloon victory on the 12th of September sparked a fire within Frank, and along with Weiner, they would go on nothing short of a rampage. The two men volunteered for mission after mission, when no missions were forthcoming, they would go free hunting on their own volition, engaging all balloons and aircraft they came across. For three days, the line was alight with flaming balloons, the pair often returning with aircraft so badly damaged that they had to be provided with new machines. On September the 15th, Weiner and Frank deliberated together on the best way to attack the balloons. It's then when they got the idea of attacking just as the evening turned to night in hopes of making enemy aim poorer and catching the Germans busy lowering the balloons. They put the idea to the test that same day, taking flight at 6.50 p.m. They arrive at their destination, just as dusk sets over the war-torn land. The balloon is nestled between the trees as the ground crew prepare to deflate it. It's perfect. The pair dive straight down upon the target, guns blazing. The bullets rain upon the enemy and the balloon is set alight. The flames completely engulf the airship in seconds, creating a massive fireball that once again illuminates the landscape. The Germans spot them and anti-aircraft guns open up on the two spads, but it's too late and the two men make their escape. The plan was a complete success and Frank's superiors quickly spread the word of this new tactic. 
The very next day, several dignitaries arrived for a demonstration using two enemy balloons visible from the airfield. Among them, Eddie Rickenbacker, the top American ace and at the time distinguished Flying Cross recipient. Brimming with confidence, Frank Luke approaches him and says, Keep your eyes on these two balloons. You'll see the first one out there go up in flames at exactly 7.15, and the other one will do likewise at 7.19. Rickenbacker gives him back a skeptical look, and Frank heads for his fighter. The two aircraft fly off into the darkness, leaving the airfield and the gathered officers in silence. As the time approached, an officer voiced his skepticism. It's impossible. To get a balloon at all is a feat. To time its demise five hours ahead is beyond reason, and to do it at night is just not on the cards. Five seconds. The men erupt in cheers as the bright orange light denotes victory, just in time. By God, there she goes. No way. Minutes later, the second balloon is also brought down in a ball of flame to the joy of the crowd. There's a hum in the distance. The assembled crowd erupt in cheers and applause as two planes fly back, their warbirds covered propeller to tail in scars from their battle. That day, Frank Luke would earn his new nickname. The Arizona Balloon Buster. Look, boss. On the 18th of September, just six days since the rampage began, Frank and Wayner were out in their usual hunts. Frank had already taken down two more balloons with Wayner covering him. Neither noticed as two Fokker D7s attacked them from above. They pounced on Wayner, who was forced into a sharp evading tactic. The Germans gave chase, guns ripping apart the small biplane. With the absence of radios, Frank tragically didn't realize his friend's desperate situation and flew on. Wayner fought valiantly, but couldn't hold them back. His wings were shredded and his warbird plummeted to the ground. Joseph Wayner tragically perished from his injuries. The incident devastated Frank. Around this same time, his story caught the public's imagination and his feats were shared to the world, but he couldn't bring himself to celebrate. What choice did Frank have? He decided to carry on the fight alone taking several more balloons across the front. It wasn't the same without his friend, and the odds would surely catch up with him eventually. On September the 29th, Frank set off against three balloons sitting six miles behind enemy lines. Approaching the target, he shoots one down, and then another with practice perfection. Just one more. He's on approach, and there's a shot, louder than usual. Frank looks down. He's been hit in the chest. Struggling to keep his plane level and still under fire, he manages to get off a shot. Frank smiles through the pain as the balloon erupts in fire. He pulls away, but he can't carry on, rapidly losing blood. He crash lands near the town of Mervaux, France. With a colossal effort, he manages to exit the plane. When the Germans got to him, they found him a hundred meters away from his aircraft, ready for a last stand that was never to be. He had succumbed to his injuries. In his short 17 days of action, Frank had made a lasting impact on the United States Army Air Service. The legend of the Arizona Balloon Buster was forever immortalized. Eddie Rickenbacker, now a Medal of Honor recipient, would say of Frank, he was the most daring aviator and the greatest fighter pilot of the entire war. His life is one of the brightest glories of our air service. He went on a rampage and shot down 14 enemy aircraft, including 10 balloons, in eight days. No other ace, not even the dreaded Richthofen, has ever come close to that. In truth, Frank Luke had achieved 18 victories with 14 balloons and four aircraft. Frank Luke Jr. would be awarded the Medal of Honor and two Distinguished Service Crosses for his valiant actions. But Frank Luke's legacy still lives on today. When, on the 4th of February, 2023, a balloon was spotted over North America inside US airspace, two F-22 Raptors 
were scrambled with orders to take down the balloon. Modern day balloon busters. Their call signs were Frank 1 and Frank 2. And if you want to show your support for Balloon Busters and help support the channel, grab our great merch before it flies out of the store. If you enjoyed this video, we'd very much appreciate it if you could consider subscribing to our channel. The more viewers we have, the better videos we can make in the future. Thank you.